there, I'm Jade Harrison, AKA JD Gaines. I am a content creator and streamer on Twitch as well as a personal trainer and coach. Last weekend, I flew all the way to Vegas from North Carolina to participate in the 2023 TwitchCon. I was invited to speak on a panel by the first partnered fitness and health streamer of Twitch, Tomination Time. And in this panel, I spoke with other streamers like Smashly, uh, Smexy, Ace of All Trades, a one, the Holder Heck and Tom himself about what it's like to be on a fitness journey as a content creator on Twitch. In this panel, we talked a lot about um, you know, how to get in shape, how to stay in shape, and gave some tips that go beyond just being a content creator. We all kind of face the same sort of difficulties when it comes to staying consistent on our fitness journeys and staying focused or even just getting started. So there's a lot of really good information in here that's offered by all of the panelists. The video for this stream, if you're watching on YouTube, was recorded live on the Holder Hex channel, and I also recorded some of the audio. Now, if you're unfamiliar with Twitch as a platform, Twitch is a platform for people to live stream various activities. It's most well known for as a gaming platform where people play video games and you can watch them play and you can interact with them live via chat. But there's also a lot of other categories on Twitch where people stream everything from art, uh, where they're making things, to cooking streams where people are cooking and maybe teaching you how to cook. And then there's also the fitness and health category, which is relatively new. They just added the fitness and health category to Twitch at the beginning of the pandemic, when a lot of people were stuck at home and were working out at home and wanted to connect over their workouts and find you know, virtual gym buddies. So the category grew a lot during that time. And then since the lockdowns ended and the world has begun to open up again, those of us who are still in the community have been kind of asking ourselves, what's next? Where do we move forward and where do we fit in in this like new world post COVID? This conference was such a great opportunity for us to brainstorm ways to continue to grow as a community and to continue moving forward in our own personal journeys. So there's lots of cool things that are going to be coming out as an effect of the Twitch conference. So be on the lookout for more content put together by collaborations of different streamers on this platform and make sure to come and check us out. You can follow my channel, twitch.tv slash jdgains on Twitch or just follow the category as a whole. There's a lot of great content on this platform for learning about fitness and connecting with other people who are on a fitness journey. So now let's take a look at this panel and thank you once again to Tom and Nation Time for organizing this panel and bringing us all together for this conference. Uh, I'm, my name's Tom, Tom Nation Time. I stream uh, fitness and help people get started in my home gym. It's mostly talking and memes with a little bit of lifting here and there because let's be real, streaming fitness is mostly just chatting. Yeah. So, um, but uh, I focus on yeah. helping people get fit and then at night do game streams uh, with lots of production value by having my wife help is right there. Hi, I'm Jane Gaines. I'm also a variety streamer, mainly in the fitness and health category. Um, I also do some gaming as well when I can. Um, it's mostly talking like you. <laughs> no. And I think I can say that's probably for most of us who's yeah. doing this first range, just talking and moving out. And then jumping yeah. here and there, or doing some kind of jumping jacks or something like that. Yeah. Um, but uh, I love this community so much. I started at the beginning of the pandemic, and I think that's where the fitness and health category really started taking off. And it's grown so much, and we've grown into such a tight knit community. So I'm happy to be here. I'm Sunshine. Uh, I mostly stream Star Citizen. Um, I actually just got into like, fitness uh, 516 days ago. <laughs> I have um, not broke that streak at all, so yeah. <laughs> I'm actually just going to remove my camera for right now. Games and whatnot. I also uh, am part of the uh, fitness community and whatnot. I'm a, a former semi-professional 
football player. I uh, played football, basketball, track, majority of my life. Uh, fitness is what is a part of me. It's mentally ingrained into my head to do something active. I've literally been active since the age of three years old and I haven't stopped since being 30, 33 now and I'm trying to implement that into my uh, family. Uh, I'm going to be a father of two soon. And, uh, <laughs> I tried to implement that with my, uh, with my son now, who's two, born on three, and also with my wife, because I know if it wasn't for God and me being active and being gaming and fitness into my life, I don't know where my life would have been. So, yeah. Uh, hi, guys. I'm Ben. I'm the older heck. Um, I told them to do that. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, I actually, I, I, I don't know, I don't know where to, like how to explain my streaming journey. I started playing World of Warcraft uh, like pre-pandemic, um, and then when the, the Panini hit, I was a, a personal trainer at the time, and I started kind of training my clients uh, through Twitch, and then the community kind of grew from there. Um, my fitness journey, I was a cage fighter when I was younger, and so I've implemented a lot of like martial arts and bodybuilding adjacent stuff into the stream. And we do a lot of really fun stuff <laughs> where people will like request Tekken combos and then I have to learn them <laughs> in real time and then do them in real time. So streamer suffers, but chat likes it. And uh, I'm also currently obsessed with Baldur's Gate. Uh, I, I, I play a lot of role playing games. Uh, always been a nerd. Fitness, you know, helped me, you know, not get beat up for being a nerd. So, um, <laughs> but yeah, th like 300 plus hours in Baldur's Gate. Uh, just ridiculously addicted to that game. Uh, I don't know, like, yeah, hello, I'm Holder Heck. <laughs> All right, well, we introduced ourselves. Uh, let's start down there this time. And mm. I want to hear more uh, details about what was your fitness journey like and uh, what did it take for you to get on that fitness train? Um, okay, yeah, so this is, this is pretty easy. I get asked this all the time. Uh, so when I, was, when I was like a little kid, I was actually like morbidly obese. I was like 180, 200 pounds and I was like 10. And uh, so my parents, for uh, numerous other reasons as well, put me into karate. Uh, but my instructor was insane and he uh, wouldn't like train me until I did hundreds of push-ups and sit-ups and squats and ran like every single day. And so that just kind of got ingrained into me as a habit. And really, like, ever since I've been 13, I've been neurotically working out. Like, I love exercise. I'm the weird guy that actually likes lifting weights and working out. So, yeah, ever since 13 years old, just been going to the gym. Um, when I was in high school, I would get up at 5 in the morning, do katas for two hours, go to school, have a weight training class in school, ride my bike from school to the gym, from the gym to judo. That is just like... I've, I've, it, it was, it's like my whole life. I, I love fitness and it is like a cornerstone of everything I do. Yeah. Uh, this is pretty simple for me. Uh, I've done it since I was a kid. I always loved it. And my parents were very uh, accommodating. They always had just a couple of rules. You take care of the things you need to take care of the house and you do right academically, we'll support you whenever you want to do. And I've been doing sports since I was a, uh, a young child. I, was, I am the only child, so sports was my way of being able to interact with the different people, to build friends, to really build what I am now as an adult when it comes to a lot of things from a professional standpoint. Uh, I got a lot of skills, a lot of tasks for me, and fit, when it comes to fitness, I mean, it was just fun to me. I'm one of those weird people, I like to run. I, I, and uh, don't get me wrong, football will always be my, my love, but I love track, I love running. I love going around the, the track and whatnot. I love running for countless miles. Even though I'm fast, I just like running. It's, it's fun to me, it's therapeutic. And it's just something that's been mentally ingrained to me since I was a kid and I just, I enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. um, I'm a weight trainer, I like picking up the heavy thing and setting it back down. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, my fitness journey started relatively young. Um, I've been sick my whole life, I've, I've battled with a lot of um, autoimmune issues. But one of the things that I found was when I actually worked out like my legs, because I get a lot of pain in my legs, um, the muscles that cushioned my joints, so when I would have flare-ups or inflammation, it wasn't as bad because I had something there. It was something that I could control. 
when I can't control other things about my health, I can at least control the fact that I, I don't run, but I do the stair step. <laughs> there you go. Hey, cardio's like cardio. Minutes a day. It's cardio is cardio. It's fine. <laughs> totally fine. Cardio. There you go. Um, and then I found that it, muscle became relatively easy to me. I don't have the fastest metabolism in the world, but muscle goes on and stays on generally, even when I have my downs and I can't do a whole lot. Um, this year I've been to the ER twice. So it's been difficult to get back onto it, but once I'm there, I'm good to go. I'm elated to be at the gym every time I'm there. Mm -hmm. um, much of this journey has been a journey of trying to be comfortable being me. Um, so I'm trans. Uh, it's been a whole journey of just like trying to find comfortableness just in how I look and how I feel. And um, about I guess in 2016, TwitchCon, I was at my heaviest weight of like 210 pounds. And it was like the first time like people were taking pictures of me and stuff. And I hated how it looked. I hated it so much. And it kind of got me um, wanting to change all that. And so I started the keto diet and I lost like 90 pounds. I <laughs> think it was yes. a lot. Yeah, and thanks. But I hated it still. Like, <laughs> about it every day and so today is 516 days um let's go <laughs> <coughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jim yeah. Rogan. Yeah. 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 So yeah, the pick dance was just just useful for the guys. Yeah. I well, as time went on, in my twenties, uh, I'm actually 63, but in my twenties, I well, um, in my twenties, I had uh, serious crippling back issues, um, six different major back problems, and the worst of them being the sciatic nerve impingement, where like it was so painful I could barely walk sometimes. I couldn't even put underwear on. I had to use a cane or even crawl to the bathroom, you know, like because of how painful it was. It was that anime moment, anime shit in my life. And yeah. the like <laughs> demo again, like, yeah. I was, like that was like rock bottom for me. And uh, the aesthetics or whatever that aspect is nice, but like the health and yes. never being weak in that sense. But like that's not so wrong being weak. I want to be strong for my family and those around me. Yes. I didn't want my wife like putting my underwear on for me in like. 60s. <laughs> <laughs> but as time went on, I figured out how simple it can be. And when I started shouting, like to build muscle, burn fat, and I started shouting plateaus that, like, I set ceilings for myself, like, okay, if I ever get past this, that'd be, be amazing. And I was like, well, I got past that. Because back then, I think, like, squatting 60 pounds was so risky and painful for my, my, my nerves, uh, my static nerve. But once I got past that, like, 100 pounds, like, what's next? Is it 200 pounds? Is it 300 pounds? Like, how far did this go? I didn't, but, but, <laughs> that, still, like, that is how far it went. So, it was so impossible. It was like shattering what I thought was impossible. And that got me um, on the fitness train. So, um, but the, the next thing I want to talk about is the benefits, right? Uh, we all hear about benefits. I want to hear some more stories from you all about, like, what have you personally experienced with um, the benefits of integrating fitness or nutrition uh, in your life. And so, like, for me, uh, we all have negative energy, uh, cursed energy, if anyone watches the Last annual reference is But uh, we all have negative energy somehow. Like, some people struggle with, like, you know, depression, sadness, anxiety, yeah. anger, the dark side, right? Palpatine always was bring my ear. And uh, having that outlet for fitness, it helps, like, it's less durable to channel all the negative energy out. Yeah. And that has been so huge. That in the momentum of getting stuff done. Um, when I work out in the morning, start my day off, um, instead of opening up social media and then blink and then two hours pass by, I get up and then try to get the workout in and start that day off. It starts off so much more productive. No me, I started something uh, for uh, for my day. <laughs> but how about for you all? Let's start here for like some of the benefits you see. I, I want to echo what you were saying earlier too, with that, with the, you were saying your, your mental fitness, yes. your mental health. It's been such a huge like improvement, especially for me, um, because like it's it's really different when you do something every day. Like everybody does like something that they think they enjoy every day for like 30 minutes, and it's like watching TV or playing video games. We all play video games, but I think the thing difference is, is that when we get done with those activities, we don't feel proud of what we did. And I found that the moment I started working out, I was suddenly doing something that made me feel accomplished and proud every single day. And even if it was 10 minutes, because some of my workouts have been like literally 10 minutes, but I did it, and it made me feel proud. And then literally the next day, I still have that feeling of proud and accomplishment, and it pushes me to do it again and again and again. And, again. and, and that has been such a huge boon to, to my mental health and making me feel like I'm accomplishing something for me and not just something to burn the time or be entertained. So I just like, I heard you say that. I was like, yeah, yes. <laughs> I, yeah, totally to, to like echo that as well and add on to it. Um, being an adult is hard. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. And um, it's, there's, especially as someone who's like neurodivergent, I have autism and ADHD, so the winning combo. Um, there's so much in grown-up life where you don't get like an immediate like, yeah, ha, ha moment, you know? <laughs> where it's like, you know, so, so much of grown-up life is... Um, so I, I, I feel like so much of, um, like grown up life is like the, you're like, you, you're just like grinding along for this like nebulous thing in the f goal in the future that you're going to achieve at some point. And especially with the panini and, um, and everything that we've experienced over the last couple of years, just being a, a young adult, 
Um, it is just really nice to have something that I can, like a, a, a little quest line that I can complete every day, and that's just something that I can be like, you know, yeah, ha, ha, I did it, you know? <laughs> um, but then also, the seeing the progress, like you mentioned before, um, I think a lot of people come to fitness with like the view of aesthetics because they want to look better, and they want to look better because they want to feel better about themselves. And I mean, I am a personal trainer, it's my main job, and what I've learned through this community is that sense of progress is really, like, you, you think you want to look better, but what you actually want is you want to feel better, you want to feel more accomplished, you want to feel like you're a good adult, you know? And there's something that's a very, e it's an easy thing to check off, oh, I ate some vegetables, you know? And it's an easy thing to check off, like, you don't even have to, like, go balls to the wall in the gym, just show up, you know what I mean? And showing up and checking that off is like, okay, well, I maybe like experienced a lot of setbacks and I had a hard time today and like I'm going through a bunch of stuff and I feel like I'm struggling as an adult, but I added five pounds onto my bench, so. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, all of that. Yeah, and like that's, I think that that's so empowering and we just spend so much of our time feeling disempowered and powerless. So it's one way that you can kind of feel more connected with yourself and feel like you're more in, in, in control of your life because it's one thing that you can control. Uh, I'll, I'll say something. Um, so for my student athletes out there, you guys know the, the rule. You look good, you feel good, you play good. And that's a, always something that you can incorporate into fitness, into sports, or anything like that. Um, as a father, too, you know, sometimes I have to beat my son up to get to, like, so for me, I gotta get to beat my son to before he wakes up. He wakes up at 5 a.m. So that means I have to wake up around like 4 a.m. or so to be able to get in a workout. In. But the benefits of working out super early in the morning, I work in corporate IT full time. I have a lot to do, but when I do my workouts, I'm locked in. After I, I do my workout and everything, I take a shower, I get my morning coffee in, I get my water in. I'm locked in. I'm good to go. I can do 12 plus hours in front of a computer with classes, of course. But I feel, I feel good. I feel locked in. I see the difference of when I don't work out in the morning, then working out at night. Okay. Yes, I get it yeah. for those out there. Everybody's schedule is different. That's, and that's, you know, you have different things in your life and everything like that. But I know when I work out at, at the night, I'm not really into it. I have to mentally, I have to like teach myself and talk to myself. All right, Frank. You gotta go put it. Did you work out today? No? All right, you gotta go work out. But that's why the, the, the benefits of working out in the morning is just tremendous because you stay locked in whatever you have to do. So I, that's just something I've learned throughout my life. And it, it keeps you on a schedule for sure. Yes, yeah. absolutely. I, I struggle with schedules and stuff. I've got I've got a little bit of spiciness myself. Hey. Uh, and um, one of the things that and it's been a running gag with one of my other career friends is um, I asked my friend Mason, uh, he I was like, when are you going to play games with me again? Because I, I chaperoned him through survival horror games. Uh, or he does. Um, and he was like, Sam, if you can stay healthy for 24 hours, we'll play games again. And we've not played games again since. Um, but uh, it's one of those things that's become such a running gag with, with how chronically ill I am that doing something for my body that allows me to... Um, nurture in a way that, that is helpful for me in the long term has been really nice for me. Um, one of the benefits that you don't hear about a lot um, outside of just going to the gym is giving yourself regimented meals, giving yourself a good amount of protein, and carbs are not scary. They're just part of your food. I, I, I remember sitting in the sauna one time when I was first starting working out, and there were these two, two gals talking, and I can't put it past them to have this conversation because this is something that's been shoved down our throat. And if you want to get started on working out, you've got to go low carb, no carb, no fat diet. <laughs> that's so bad for you. It's so damaging for your body. You need that fuel. And so they were talking about how they were having just protein shakes every day. And then they felt mm -hmm. like crap and they didn't know why. Yeah. Well, I, I can tell you why. Yeah. I can tell you why you're not feeling so good. Um, but like, I, I cook a lot of uh, Japanese food. I like anything that's. Uh, refreshing, fresh, and easy for me to eat. And one of the benefits of working out regularly is if you don't eat regularly, your body's going to hurt so much more. Oh the soreness is it's palpable. You end up having the, the time where like, you did legs and now you need to buckle every time you walk for the next four days. You can't have 
you need the walker to yeah. get out of the house. Or you get the T Rex arms and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to bend her arms and it's just not working. So it's benefited me by allowing myself to give myself the, the three square meals without uh, going, oh, well, I can skip it because I'm, I'm a habitual. Um, stress starter. I don't eat if I'm stressed out. Same. I, yeah, I, I just uh, there's a lot of relationships with food that can be damaging. Mine is just that I don't I don't eat enough. Mm -hmm. So when I'm working out, I have to eat, or I can feel so much worse. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I'm the same. That is not just the stress eating. A stress, stress starvation does not get enough attention, I think, because yeah. there's yeah. a lot of stress starvers out there. Yeah. Where we're yeah. stressed, we just don't eat. And that's yeah. like. Well, I'm autopilot that, right now, and I don't have time to eat. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's tough. Yeah. I got or, to or at I least. Don't worry about that. <laughs> or, or you get like the people who have like a mixed you know, reaction where like sometimes they're starving and then they binge to make up for it, or their brain is just like so starved with that dopamine. Yeah. And that's where you get a lot of that binge restrict pattern. Just to add me. Just at, just at you. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it, yeah, but, but, but I love what you're saying is like when you are on this, like when you have goals and you're working towards them and you want to feel a certain way in the gym, you want to feel a certain way when you're recovering, it can be a really great motivator to help you to kind of push back against those tendencies. Um, you know, because if you weren't working out, you probably wouldn't even. I wouldn't even feel hungry. That's the problem. Yeah. So when I'm stressed, yeah. I don't, I just think that heart just burns off. I yeah. don't feel hungry, but Same. when you work out, you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> or it's like, I'm never gonna beat my PRs, you yeah. know? I'm losing I my muscle. To the point where I was like pressing like like 440, and I'm 115 pounds. Hell yeah. And I was I was doing really well, and you know, got sick again. But you know, it's it's just a it's just a it's just a loop. It's yeah. fine. Just as long as you're you're eating while you're doing stuff, you're, you'll find your goals again. Uh, I was, I was just, I'll chime in at the end here. I was just going to say, like, the one thing that, that I like to reiterate to people is um, I think, like, unless you're weird, like, I guess us, and you really <laughs> like working out, and it's like, you just, you enjoy this, and it's like, ooh, it's like a nice serotonin boost, which it actually becomes for anybody. Yeah, it's like, which it literally becomes for anybody if you do it long enough, but that's another story. But the, the one thing that I like to say is, as someone who is also neurospicy, I'm like rampant ADHD. I cannot ever keep track of anything. I cannot ever plan anything. I do not know what time it is. Um, but, you know, the, the regimented of like, this is when I work out. This is what I do. This is how I do it. And every day I do this, and it becomes a thing that I do, and it just becomes an autopilot. And I think that's really helpful. And I think the first step to doing that is the hardest thing, but um, one thing that I really, really like to nail home to people is you kind of are what you do all the time, and um, I think a lot of people maybe don't really realize that. They're like, I am what I think I am. Like, sure, but you're actually what you do every day. So if you take that first step to go to the gym, change how you're eating, like, do something, go walk on a treadmill for 30 minutes, and you do that seven days a week. You become the person who works out. You become the person who does things that you don't want to do. And that, I think, the thing that I love the most about fitness is that it is a almost guaranteed success. Because nothing else in life really works this way. Like, you can't just be like, I'm gonna be the best at this. And then you do 10 steps and you are. It like doesn't really work that way. But, yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, right? And it's, it's like, well that's, that's why fitness and video games really work well together because it's like the same thing. It's like, if I grind for 10 hours, I will get more levels. And it's like, if you work out and you eat protein and you sleep, you will build more muscle. It's a guaranteed success. Yeah, get fitness XP. I think I think of everything like a video game or like in Dungeons and Dragons terms. Like that's how I rationalize the world. Yeah, yeah. You got to respect sometimes. Sometimes you know you get injured, so you got like uh, you got like a little setback here. So now we got to respect. We got to focus on something else. But it's like, yeah, exactly, exactly. But I just think like. Yeah, it changed the whole character. It's fine, like, but it still works, right? But yeah, as you, if you force yourself to do something, you take that first hard step, that second hard step, that third hard step. Eventually, you can kind of like tell yourself internally, like, I am the person that can make myself do the things I don't want to do, and then that is like so empowering because I, I feel like so many people get 
inundated with how hard life is. Like what, what Jade was saying, it's like, you know, being an adult sucks most of the time. We have to constantly do these things we don't want to do. And it's not fun and it's hard. But if you can internalize the, I am the person who does the hard thing and I do it regularly and I do it with joy, then that is a superpower. And I think that fitness is a huge step to becoming that person. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is kind of an easy question for me because I stream fitness, but <laughs> I can, I can, I was thinking about this question earlier. I was like back in the day, like back when I was just doing like gaming or back when I was just doing gaming streams. So you would queue up for PVP or something in World of Warcraft and there would be like a 10 minute wait to like actually get in a game. In those 10 minutes, I'd just be working out. And even back before I was streaming, even back when I was like a teenager and playing the game, it's like the exact same thing. If you had to wait to do anything, if it was any sort of downtime, I'd be next to the computer doing push-ups, sit-ups, like literally anything you can just to get that in. Because there's so much downtime I think people negate in a day. They're like, oh, I'm doing this thing. I can't do anything else. It's like you could get a stand desk, you could get a walking treadmill. There is a way to integrate fitness into a lot of the things that we do as content creators or even as just gamers or even as just people. I think it's just understanding how many hours you have in a day and then segmenting some of that time for fitness. Like, you know, obviously it's just the content creation, right? It's like, you know, some of us stream we're crazy 12 hours a day. It's like, how do I work out when I stream 12 hours a day and I have a massive adrenaline dump at the end? Yeah, yeah. And you know, it's, well, in the middle of that stream, you know, you're doing squats or push ups or something. Like, you just have to integrate that into your life. And I think, and this is one of the things that I like to, again, talk about is if you can show people that you're this, you know, I don't know entertaining person online and you're doing all this cool stuff in this video game but you're also being like okay now I'm going to get out of this chair and go do this exercise it shows chat maybe they can do that and I think that that's good like I, I, I take the responsibility I guess of like being a role model like really seriously so that's why I like to like show people like I might dream for 12 hours a day I might be a degenerate like insane human being <laughs> but I'm going to go and do those push-ups or squats or whatever yeah, yeah. Being a good fitness ambassador. Yeah. 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 Uh, for me, uh, I mean, God blessed me with a supportive uh, family. Uh, you know, when it comes to balancing content creation and fitness and whatnot, you know, uh, when my son is with my wife and I know that I have some downtime, I'm going to get my fitness in. I'm going to try to plan accordingly. Now, there's some times where things may not work out according to plan. As a parent, you guys know that happens all the time. So it's about it's about sacrifice. It's about understanding. Are you going to take the time to get in a workout? Are you going to take the time to create the, the, the content or whatever it may be to put it out there for people of your community? It's about really taking the time and uh, planning ahead, but also knowing that sometimes it takes sacrifice, knowing that it's not going to be just you. I always, I learned a long time ago, all of this is not because of me. It's because of the people around me. I wouldn't get to the point of where I am today if it wasn't the people around me. As an adult, I've been blessed to be able to have that opportunity to continue to do what I love, which is gaming and fitness, and being able to inspire others to do it. But I know it's not me alone. So um, it's just all, it's about a healthy balance. It's about really knowing yourself, knowing those around you, and trying to plan accordingly. And if not, just making sure that you have others around you right now, and really knowing that it's sacrifice at the end of the day. It's, it's sacrifice. If you want to take the time to do fitness, if you want to take the time to do content creation, do you need to know what it's going to take? And sometimes you got to take a little bit away from yourself to be able to put it out there. Absolutely. I think that you made a good point about working in the morning. Um, that's one of the ways that I've found that I've, I'm able to balance working out and content creation because I, I like waking up really early. I naturally wake up really early, even if I go to bed at an ungodly hour. Thursday night is a great example. There's a court party, there's a bunch of other stuff going on. There you go. I didn't get to my hotel to fall asleep until 3 a.m. And instead of falling asleep, I played Vampire Survivors on my like, Steam Deck oh. for now. Oh. I was like, I want a game. It's like you're a game. Oh, no, oh, wait. That, that was That's what like Spider-Man One more game. Okay. Um, but when I wake up before I do any, like, 
streaming cinema, I can go to the gym. That's, that's checked off my list. Yep. Now, if I do 12 hours of Baldur's Gate and I get yeah. up and my legs are wobbly, like, but I just sat down for 12 hours. I don't want to go to the gym now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I've got, you know, my, uh, my, my roommate has a, uh, has a manual car and I don't drive a manual, I drive an automatic, but mine's always in the garage. So if he gets home, he parks in front of the garage. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> so then that's another blocker for me. It's almost like my brain gives me excuses not to do it when I could just ask him. It takes him two seconds to pull his car out, let me out, and then I can call him again. Hey, can you let me back in? That takes no time, and it's really not a big deal for, for him either. But my my brain goes, it's such a hassle, and then you have to, you have to drink a pre workout, and your body always has to drink during pre workout because I don't do stimulation pre workouts. Um, I mean, uh, pump only yeah. pre workouts because caffeine um, causes my body to shut down. So I just, I, I can't do it. But then I, if I work out after stream, then it's late and now I've gotten myself all pumped up after the gym and I have to go to bed. Yeah. I can't go to bed when I just went to the gym. So so it's like some video games I'm the first of them that I survived. It's the hour. So the balance is there as long as I'm doing it before I do the rest of my day. Um, because I'm a full-time content cre like creator, that's all I do. Um, I'm very thankful that I have the opportunity to do that, and I don't have to juggle a full-time job like I used to, because I used to work 84 hours a week, 40 in, in content creation, 45 because I ran GameStops, and then I would go to the gym after GameStop, and then get home, and then stream until the wee hours of the morning, open the store for GameStop. It was just, I was killing myself, though. So I'm thankful that I can do content creation full time and I can set that time frame for myself. I'm not gonna get fired if I don't open the store, yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, so starting it off in the morning, just check it off my list and that's the best way for me to balance it. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna branch off that because I feel like there's like a bunch of people in the audience that are like, mornings suck. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, me too. There's, there's at least a few. Me too. Oh, um, yeah. But I think what I found um, <laughs> no, like at all of you are like not, not me, like, oh, not me. Oh, I'm not. Um, that's not my life. <laughs> and, and I, I love working out in the morning, but what I found is I have five jobs. Um, I, have, I have an insane schedule. My schedule is like the LGBT flag threw up on it because of all the colors. And and the problem, <laughs> the problem with that is that. Like, you can't always work out in the morning, you can't always wake up in the morning, you know, because there's different things I have going on that I have to be super flexible. But what I found is you have to be flexible with the things that you're okay with being flexible on and inflex inflexible on things that you absolutely don't budge on. And so for me, that's working out every day because consistency mm -hmm. is the number one thing that will get you anywhere with fitness. Mm -hmm. and, and I was like, I'm not gonna be flexible on on skipping a workout. I'm just not going to do it. Even if it's 10 minutes, because I've worked out, I've had workout days where I've worked out for three hours. And I've had ones where, like I said, I've worked out for 10 minutes. I got four exercises in. I literally yesterday, I had 17 minutes in the gym before I had like a brunch that I had to be at. But I got to the gym, I did my workout and ran to the brunch. <laughs> and I was like, okay, well, I got some running in too. So that was nice. <laughs> but <laughs> All the time, all the time, yeah. If your brain does that thing like mine does, it's like, oh, well, now you've got to do one more thing before you can even go. If you're already in your workout, yeah. you don't have to get the line on a bitch. And it's comfortable. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. 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 Find the stuff that fits you well. Yeah. And do it all Every day. Yeah. But yeah, just uh, be flexible with the things you can and mm -hmm. and just don't be like be inflexible on the stuff that you really care about. And honestly, if you want to get in shape, consistency. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's really smart. Um, for, for me, like my my approach to Twitch is I'm just here to hang out. Um, <laughs> when I before before the pandemic, I worked in a gym as a personal trainer and my workouts, they were a social thing for me. Um, you know, I have my, my, my besties, my swole mates, and we used to lift together and we would always be around, always be around to like, you know, give each other some tips or um, spot each other. And we were always learning from each other. And I missed that during the pandemic. And so I actually started with gaming 
And then um, some of my IRL friends were like, you should stream your workouts like, on, on Twitch. And I was like, is that a thing? And so um, I, I started, and that's where it really took off. Seltzy, I don't know where he is. Like, re- Seltzy, uh, the, the godfather of the, tw- the fitness and health category, really took me under his wing and like, just brought all of these people to my stream. And that's how I kind of got welcomed into like, the, 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 the in crowd, you know? Um, and uh, got me affiliated re- really, really quickly. And we all just kind of supported each other. And, and I was like, oh, this is kind of like being in the gym with my friends. And it also like started to become this thing. Like I started powerlifting on Twitch. Like it was like about the same time that I started streaming that I started powerlifting. Before that, I'd done like mainly MMA training, martial arts, and a little bit of bodybuilding. Um, and so uh, there's so many powerlifters on Twitch, and so we all kind of supported each other. And I learned so much from the other streamers who were doing powerlifting and people in the chat who were powerlifting. Um, and that's like how I grew as a powerlifter into being, you know, now that's like my main thing. Um, and so for me, it's like a social thing. What I found about Twitch and especially like this, this community, Twitch in general, people just want to be in a part of your journey. Like they just want to feel involved. They just want a little bit of attention. They just want to feel like they're a part of your journey. And I think that, you know, as a content creator, I've been able to kind of go between gaming and fitness and IRL streams because my audience are mainly just like, they just want to hang out. And they're just like, we'll hang out with you while you work out. We'll hang out with you while you cook. We'll hang out with you while you game. And I think just having that approach has been very freeing for me because it's like, they're just along for the ride and I'm along for, the, for, for their journey as well. And you know, they've helped me stay consistent because as a content creator, there's a lot of demands on our time and there's a lot of like sitting in front of the computer kind of stuff that we need to be doing. And so this community has kind of helped me to prioritize my own fitness and health, which, you know, as any personal trainer will tell you, like we're terrible at training ourselves. <laughs> so just having, so, so like you as a content creator, if you want to be involved in fitness, just start doing it. Your community will probably love it because they just want to be involved in the journey. And it's so cool to see how much we all have grown as athletes or just as content creators just with each other. So I think just start doing it and, and see who's along for the ride. Yeah. For me, balancing content creation and fitness, there's one thing that I always keep in mind, which is you can't do, be the best at everything. You can't be the best, world, world's best bench presser and world's best marathon runner and world's best content creator. Speak for yourself. Yeah, it's a challenge. It's a challenge. But, um, and so, like, there's going to be different times in our content creation life where we make a push for something. Mm-hmm. And you know what? If you have to grind for something because you're going to try, like, a, a, a new style of content or a new set of YouTube videos you're going to edit and export out or try TikTok shorts, um, that leads to a lot of sacrifice yes. in the time. And, and yes. so sometimes fitness will be on the back burner, and that mm-hmm. can be okay. Uh, as long as you recognize internally, like, it, this, this sometimes is temporary, uh, and it's not the end of the world. So mm-hmm. I, I have a bonus question. We're running a little bit low on time. I have a bonus question uh, pivoting off of this for anyone who wants to chime in. Uh, What are your thoughts on what are some qualities of plans that look sustainable versus not sustainable? Mm -hmm. So for me, um, one of those is people sometimes will have this all or nothing mentality when it comes to a plan. And they feel like I'm so far behind in life or fitness or whatever. I'm not like these all of us freaks up here who get up early or later or whatever. I do not get up early. <laughs> <laughs> I, I do not. <laughs> but uh, they, they look at us and they, they might think like, oh, like I have to have the perfect plan. Yeah. Most optimal or so I'm not starting at all. And yeah. I just want to say like, that's not sustainable. Um, you don't devalue the slow and steady progress of just paying attention to your food, tracking your calories. Uh, doing some resistance training, any kind of cardio, whether you're running to, a, to, to the convention center or uh, getting a little Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, I, I what about any- I, I mean, I just, I just immediately, just because what you said, I say this all the time. People are so obsessed with optimization. And again, I think this comes from, again, we all play video games. We all want to be the best in the world at video game. So we translate that to we're like, well, I can't start my workout plan because I didn't get up at the right time. I didn't have enough water. And obviously I can't, I can't optimally lift to a 10 RPE. It's like, God, it's not that important. Like just go like any workout you do is better than contemplating the theoretical possible best workout you might be able to do in the future. Okay. So that's just, 
I, I, I run into that uh, so much because that's my main job as a personal trainer and I actually have some of my clients in the audience and I think that for most, most of you, the, the biggest lesson from your time with me is learning the concept of what I call like your MVP, your minimally viable plan, which is what you fall back on when things go crazy and it, it, we have been talking about that a lot on my stream. Um, and in my community, your minimally viable plan is like your basic, just figure out what your basic principles are, what you want to do. If you just generally, generally want to eat healthy, you know, follow the my plate model. It's there for a reason. Make sure that you put some vegetables on your plate, that you're eating protein at every meal. And sometimes you're not going to be able to be tracking everything that you eat. Um, for some people that's triggering right? Um, for if you have some kind of a history of disordered relationship with food, um, you don't have to be doing all the things to be moving the needle a little bit on your health. Um, so your minimally viable things are making sure you're eating your veggies at least once a day. If you can do it once a day, you can keep moving forward. And then as, <laughs> and then as, and then as far as your exercise, you know, have a minimally viable plan, even if that's as simple as I'm going to walk for 7,000 steps a day or whatever your, whatever your steps goal is. Maybe you're not used to that. You want to, maybe you usually walk 1,000 steps a day. Set a goal for yourself of 3,000 and just make sure that it's something that you can pretty easily check off with very little extra effort and have that as in your back pocket for when things go crazy because shit happens to all of us. And we all, like, that's the first thing that goes when, when, when the stuff hits the fan um, is your, your, your nutrition and your exercise. So if you've got a minimally viable plan where you're saying, like, I'm going to just try to move for 30 minutes a day. It doesn't matter what I do. I'm just going to get my blood pumping. I, and then maybe, maybe one day you're like, hmm, I feel like uh, I could go to the gym for my 30 minutes. Or I can barely get out of bed, so I'm just going to get up and do some yoga. So that's what I encourage all of my clients and followers to do is like have that minimally viable plan in the back pocket. And it is okay if all you can do is hit the minimum. That's okay. It is sufficient to keep the needle moving forward because when things calm down, it's going to be so much easier for you to get back on track if you've been consistently doing the minimum. It's a lot easier to get back into it than when you're going from full stop. Yeah. I'm going to chime in for a second with uh, time. We'll probably have to do double time now. And so uh, we'll probably have to keep the answers to 60 seconds or less. And uh, the applause, wonderful, but we'll have to save it for the end. So any, anyone else want to chime in on this? Yes. Um, so, oh, go, go, go. I, I think it's important to, to, to know that um, an unrealistic goal is looking on Instagram and finding the person with the perfect lighting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We all make sure we have good lighting. It's, it's not picture. real. We have our angles. We have our things that make us look good. Go, if you go to the gym, you'll see the lighting is very specific. Yep. Yes. You're, you're doing your you're doing your pull downs. You can see mm -hmm. all the lines. Yep. You get home. You're like, oh, where'd it go? It wasn't your phone. <laughs> it was the lighting. Yeah, that's what I did. It's the lighting. I changed the lighting in my house. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just have the light following you. Everywhere I go to my home, but just that is an unrealistic goal. Feeling good and looking good in the mirror for yourself is far better a goal and much more attainable. Look for a personal best that is one more rep than you did last week, 10 more pounds than you did last month. Don't look at you know Joe Schmo on his Instagram with the, the filters for contrast turn all the way up. <laughs> you know, like, that's not really Why do I have They do not look like that. So you shouldn't have to, to ruin your own mental health to try and look like something they don't even look at. Exactly. So just to echo, like, try not to, like, hit unrealistic goals is I have set like nine world records in video games and every single one that I've set was not perfect ever mm -hmm. it was never perfect and so in life in general you can reach for like the stars but even the best even your world records or the world's records yeah. are still not going to be perfect. So trying to reach that perfect goal is just unrealistic. Yeah. So don't 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 add that to your life <laughs> or yeah. your mental load. Agreed. So uh, the next thing I want to talk about is no one's perfect. Even though it seems like we have it all together, a lot of us don't. <laughs> so uh, can you anyone anyone uh, tell us about a time you fell off the fitness train and, and how you got back on? But you know within a sixty second time. Uh, I did. <laughs> uh, this is pretty quickly. So um, I actually fell off the fitness train when my son was born. Uh, we, he had just been born in November of 2020, so right in the pandemic. And as a first-time father, 
I didn't know how to incorporate fitness in raising a kid. I was, like, I'm sitting up here at three o'clock in the morning changing my like, diapers and everything like that and not getting any sleep. And then my wife had to get some sleep because my wife doesn't get sleep, then my son's not getting sleep. So I get his milk and everything like that. So I kind of had to just, unfortunately, I had my, my fitness took a sacrifice and I just had to really focus on just being a father. And it took some time to really get my body acclimated with getting back into the regular routine and scheduling. Shout out to my mom and dad for, uh, for uh, uh, taking a look over my child so I could be able to get in some fitness and whatnot. And honestly, it's just, when you learn to be fit, to be active, you never forget it. Mm. No matter what, when you fall off or whatnot. It's not about falling off, it's about how can you get back to it. And I knew eventually I was gonna get back to it. Yeah. It just takes time and it just honestly takes some time's patience. Yeah. And then uh, I'm gonna reiterate what, what Tom said earlier. Uh, you said you had the back injury. Back in uh, late 2014, 2015, I had the exact same thing. I couldn't walk. Like I was laying on the ground. Like I had to sleep in like a weird, like hanging off the bed angle thing. And it was like six, seven months of my life literally just laying on the massive sciatic pain down my leg. I had to go get like crazy treatments and surgery for my back to even be able to walk again. And then um, just reiterating what, what Ace here said, same thing. Once, once you make this a habit in your life, once you prioritize fitness, it's always in your brain. It's always there. So I spent eight months, you know, almost a year not working out, laying on the ground, eating like crap, being miserable. And uh, it's just, as soon as I was able to walk again, I was walking on the treadmill. As soon as I was able to move more than that, I was lifting light weights in the gym. As soon as I was able to move without pain, I was, you know, doing leg press or squats and I was going back to kicking and hitting the bag. It's just, you create these habits in your brain and they're always there. So massive injury, massive setback. You know, my daughter was born, exact same thing. You know, you take some months off because no one's sleeping. What are you doing? You can't work out not sleeping for three days straight. It's beneficial. So, you know, you just eventually get back to it. But the habit's always there. The, the consistency is always there. And it's, it's, you will always have it once it becomes a part of you. Well, say my long point was, was this year. Um, like I said earlier, I've been in the ER twice now this year. And um, the first time I went in uh, March of this year, and I was, um, to save some of the gory details, I was vomiting blood. And um, when, you, when you are admitted for something like that, and it's been a chronic problem you've had for your whole life, it, it takes the wind out of your sails. And it's, it's just one of those things where, you know, I have not been that consistently in the way that I want to since. And I went to the ER last night as well for, for a lot of major issues that I've, I've just, I've got chronic problems. And when you fall off, it's important to, to think about your mental in that. I'm not defective because I'm not going to the gym, but I'm also not going to pull weight I know I can't pull because I'm going to hurt myself. And then it's just even more time away that I can't help because then you have to be in recovery. Um, again, it goes back to the whole food thing. If I'm having all of these issues, I need to make sure that my diet is right so that when I do go back, I'm not injuring myself internally or externally. Um, so I've got, I've got plans to go back once we're back from TwitchCon, but it's, it's going to take some time because my body's in its weakest state that it's been in a very long time. The first time I was this week was when I started working out for the first time, and that was when I was 21. I started working out when I was 21, and then I fell off because I got sick, and then I got back on, and then I fell off because I got sick. I'm in falling off because I got sick, period, and I'm not going to beat myself up with that. Yeah, you got to get off that shame spiral. Oh, it's yeah. awful. That's, that's the most important thing. I mean, my... Yeah, I think all of us have had a, our relationship with fitness has changed over the years and we've all had moments where we've fallen off or for, we get sick, we have kids, we have, we break up with our significant other, we, you know, just got out of an engagement, so I'm right there. yeah, and so any of that, the, the thing is like, as soon as you can like validate your experience, like, yeah, yeah, it's hard for me to spend more energy at the gym. It's hard for me to feed myself. That's valid, you know? Like, you, you have to recognize that, like, what you're going through is not you. Like, you are not defective. Yeah. The, you're, you're in, a, you're in a, a difficult situation. So I think the sooner that you can get off the shame spiral, the, the easier you're gonna have a, of a time, you know, getting back into taking care of yourself. Because at the end of the day, it's about, like, taking care of yourself. If you don't believe that you're worth taking care of, then you're gonna struggle taking care of yourself. You can spin that around, too. Like, if you keep falling off, right? Well, I keep falling off, but I keep getting back on. I keep getting back on, and I'm going to keep getting back on because that's who I am. And so you can always spin these things to be like, 
building yourself up instead of tearing yourself down. That's something I think a lot of people can, can help with. Like, well, I fall off all the time, but I'm always back and I always will be. I think it's yeah. important to remember that the jigsaw puzzles are not complete when you start them. Yeah. Um, and sometimes you lose pieces. Sometimes <laughs> your dog eats the pieces. Yeah. That's not yeah. happened to me yeah. multiple times. Yeah. Uh, but um, like, with, uh, we're almost out of time, at least some time for Q&A. We're going yeah. to skip to the last question, just like 20 second answers for everyone. Okay. What's one thing you want to leave everyone with? And, and for me, uh, balancing fitness and content creation uh, while being fit and pushing yourself hard is fantastic. Don't push so hard that you're literally exhausted yeah. and you can't do, do content creation. There is a balance there. Yeah. So more isn't always better when it comes to integrating fitness with content creation. Um, I'll just say that uh, reiterating on what I said earlier with the hyper optimization trend that we all like to do, um, just just do it. Like the the workout you you know do is so much better than the workout you don't do. And I think a lot of people get struggled with like, well, I'm in my mid 30s and I haven't ever worked out, so there's no point in starting. And it's like you know there's like people in their 50s that go and become a doctor. So it doesn't matter when you start. You know the best time to start is yesterday. The second best time to start is today. And then you build those habits and go forward in the future and you become a new person. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's like you control you control your camera angles, you control what people see. You know, you don't have to put a camera in your face when you're squatting. Yep. So, you know, it's like if you don't want people to see that, just put the camera on the side. I mean, I, I just own it. Like, I'll burp when I'm squatting. I have a burp, I have a burp counter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank you. Yeah, yeah. And have a good mod team. Sit down yes. and think about what kind of yes. yeah. comments I'm okay with. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. like, yeah. like yeah. on my stream, we talk about my nipples and peck dance all the time because it's part of the stream, but that may not be yeah. your brand. <laughs> <laughs> and I think those are not going to say that to me. <laughs> <laughs> These guys will probably echo it. Your chat will surprise you. Yeah. Like, yes. you, you may yes. think that they're going to be like lewd or, or whatever that you may be afraid of, but like, mm -hmm. your chat's there for you. Yeah. They're going to yeah. be there for you. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Of course. And then over here. Uh, that was amazing because this actually leads into this question. So, first, <laughs> uh, my question is, let me let's see my book. Um, my question is, based on just you, right? Um, how do you all, how have you all branded yourself throughout your journey? And do you kind of publish that journey, right? All the good, bad, ugly, right? Um, how do you do that uh, successfully? Uh, is there a point where it's, it may be too much, where you're just giving, oh yeah, I'm trying to do this today, and you really fail, right? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like we're all constantly evolving as human beings, you know? So, like, who I was four years ago is not necessarily who I was today, you know? And I think if you can just understand that as a person, and kind of lean into it and not, not really worry about the journey. The journey is the journey, it's life, right? And so if you're worried about like, well, maybe the, the version of me three years ago isn't marketable, but now this one is, it's like, well, it's, that person made you who you are today. So if people are mad about it, well, stay mad. I think it's important to do the inner work to kind of figure out what is at the core of like you and your personality. Because um, if you show up as yourself, it doesn't matter what you're doing. You can be gaming, you can be lifting, you can be whatever. Um, your people are there for you because they like your vibe. 
Um, and you just, you know, this is, you know, marketing 101. Ask your community, you know, what is your experience of me? Like, what are you here for? What do you like to see? And you, you might learn things about yourself that you didn't realize were kind of part of your brand. They're just, they're things, they're, they're, they're the patterns, they're the vibe, and that's going to be there no matter what you decide to do. Okay. <laughs> my mind has generally told me. They do like seeing you suffer, but it's all a good fun. Right? Yeah, it's just that they yeah. just want to have a good time with your friends, so if you're yeah. trying to have a day, like, you may not be close friends, like, obviously, there's a whole parasocial thing, but um, being yourself, being kind to yourself is one of those things. You don't need to be a perfect project creator, you don't need to be best at, at doing it, so you think, even if you grew up feeling like you needed to. I was good at a lot of things in school, so now as an adult, if I'm not immediately good at something, I'm like, oh, yeah. 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 I can't do this. <laughs> but that's, it's not, it's not it's I'm not the best day one, please. <laughs> okay, all right. Thank you. Thank you. That's over here. Okay, um, I, I'm thinking about doing like, um, a little bit like a part time, part time fitness gym as well. Um, do y'all have to recommend any like, workout videos, like on YouTube or whatever? For like, um, for for techniques or just specific for like specific goals. Um, I'll say techniques. So like like follow along workout that you want to follow, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, do you have any equipment? No. So I would just do like look up body weight, um, yeah. body weight yeah. out of fitness. Do some pushing, pulling, and legs. Pulling is going to be the hard one to, to find it, to find because you need some kind of equipment for pull. Um, but do be careful about DMCA because I think technically you can't show it, but everybody does it. So <laughs> just roll the dice. It's fun, whatever. <laughs> Honestly, I and I have to say this because I'm a personal trainer and I've been a personal trainer for ten years. The best thing that you can do is get a trainer or find someone who, who will work with you. You can do you can get an online coach who will tell you what to do and will customize a plan for you. That's what we're here for. I think that's probably gonna be the best fit. And then my clients, I have plenty of them who actually do their workouts that I assign them on stream. So you can still stream your workouts. Um, I think that's always gonna be the best fit. Um, but you might be able to find somebody, like a, like a trainer, or, or get on a program is what I would say. Find a program that you can get on. Bodybuilding.com has a bunch of like free programs. So, but personal trainer is always going to be the first, like that's the gold standard. Okay. I think we have time for one more question. And then afterward, I guess, I mean, you, you can chat with us outside. Yeah. Uh, so over here. Okay. One, uh, nice to add sickle cells. I'm totally going to be right now. Call me crazy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I forgot what I was going to say. But I was, I, well, so you want to know how to help people get over not being the best at something? Yeah, or like the idea that if even the idea that there's a doubt to be the best, you might as well let it try. You know, oh. get over that. I think, I think it's a really good thing to realize that you're actually never going to be the best. You do not. You're actually not. The amount of, I, you know, it's really funny that you asked this because I have like what, like a two minute highlight on the stream where I was talking about this while playing Baldur's Gate. I'm like, because like I used to be a cage fighter, but I stopped because I wanted to be an actor. And then I stopped because I wanted to be a stand-up comic. Then I stopped because I wanted to be a Twitch streamer. I'm not the best at any of those things. In fact, I'm pretty mid. But, you know, that being said, it's like you just have to know you're not going to be the best unless you've been working since the moment you've been born to be the best at this thing, like you're never gonna be the best, but you could be good, you could be unique, you can be a version of it that is unique to you and entertaining and fun. But get, get, get out of your head that you're gonna be like number one in the world at literally anything, because you're probably not, and that's freeing. That's freeing, because now you can be top 20 in like 10 things. You don't have to be number one at one. And then, you know, if you have a setback, well, guess what? You can diversify your self-worth. I might not be the best at this, but I'm still pretty good at this, 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 so I still feel good about myself.
This is what I was trying to talk about earlier when I was mentioning the world records. It's like, I have been number one in the world. I mean, me too, but still. Like, listen, I'm just saying you said you I'm number one in the world of being me. That's what I was going to say. The only thing you can be perfect at is being you. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, be that. Exactly. I think it's important to know that you're not going to be, you're not going to like every type of workout, and that's okay. I don't run. I pick the heavy thing up. I set the heavy thing back down. I am not running anywhere. Like I said, I run for my life, but I will not run for fun. <laughs> uh, I, 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 I like stair steppers. People hate stair steppers. That's okay. I love them. And, and I, I like, um, I like, uh, like, barbell hips, like, hip extensions, or I like doing, I don't like doing regular, like, squats, because I've got issues with my shoulders, so I won't do those, but I'll do everything else. Um, I, I think it's important not to beat yourself up about that stuff because there's always been this running joke about how there's the people that always skip leg day. Leg day sucks for everyone. That's okay. Just find the workouts that you can tolerate for leg day and you're going to go. I'll, I'll say this real quick uh, before we wrap it up is you're in competition with yourself. No matter what, at the end of the day, don't focus on what anybody else is doing. Focus on what you're doing because at the end of the day, no one else is going to put the battery in your back to do the things you need to do. Are you going to do it? That's what you really got to look at yourself in the mirror and say, am I going to do it today or am I going to slack off? No one else is going to be able to push that to you but yourself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Also, I would say, in terms of marketing and branding, find a couple of things that you're good at, like Holder Hack. He, like, you know, he can do comedy, he can do acting, he can yeah. do cage fighting. Find a couple of things that you're pretty decent at. Find a way you can market yourself yeah. and brand yourself as that. Because you may not be the best cage fighter. You're going to be those three things, you know. Yeah. Yeah. You may not be the best cage fighter, but I bet you you can be like a very unique comedian cage fighter or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So meet some books on marketing too. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like a bar, you know. I use vicious mockery and I start. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and like in speaking of marketing, I mean, like your audience, most people don't want to watch a, per a, a perfect person be perfect. Because what we're here for, at least I, because I'm a consumer of, of Twitch as well, I like to connect with other real people, and real people are not perfect. Yeah. So it's a, I'm sorry, but it's a stupid standard. Yeah. <laughs> if you, if, and if that helps, like nobody really wants to, nobody wants to watch perfection. It's fun for like people three seconds. People, people love the underdog. Yes, yeah. people they love, love the process. They love seeing somebody succeed when they shouldn't, you know. And the growth journey, like people want to be a part of that growth journey, yeah. that story. So... I mean, yeah, you can strive for perfection at some point in the future, but your, your, your chat is there to be with you through the journey. Yeah. So it's a non-issue. So forget about it. Just start and let people be part of your process. Yeah. Just start. Yeah. 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 All right. So uh, thank you again to all the panelists. Follow yeah. us all on Twitch. Thank you all for coming to this fitness panel. Thank you so much for watching or listening wherever you are. Make sure that you also subscribe to this podcast, either on the YouTube channel or here wherever you're listening to your podcasts. Once again, I'm Jade Harrison, aka JD Gaines, and I'll see you next time on the Coaching Corner podcast.